Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to another episode of All Things Covered. I am your host, Nigel Brito, and in today's episode, we're actually going to talk about the common mistakes made by people buying for the first time, first time buyers, and the mistakes that they make. This is actually a two part series. But in this episode, the first part, we're going to talk about the mistakes on the buyer side. And in the next episode, we're going to talk about the mistakes made by sellers that are doing it for the first time. So without further ado, there's a bunch to unpack here. So let's dive right in. So from the buyer side, you know, I think one of the biggest issues and the, the most common mistakes that people doing it for the first time is they don't budget properly. I know that goes without saying, but you'd be surprised how many people go into this kind of blindfolded and don't really have any guidance, think they can do it themselves and end up either just wasting their own time or just making some crucial mistakes right from the get go. So what not budge, not budgeting properly. Many first time home buyers fail to establish a realistic budget. You know, they typically underestimate the full costs of home ownership, including property taxes, insurance, maintenance, and unexpected repairs. Um, from the get-go, it's crucial to calculate your budget carefully and factor in all related expenses. For example, very quickly, if you're buying a fixer-upper, you'll want to get quotes on how much that entire process, getting it from what you purchased it at to what you're hoping it will be, um, you, you'll definitely want to get an idea of financially what that's going to involve, um, how long it's going to take, and just everything surrounding that. You'll just want a much clearer picture before you proceed. So budgeting properly, can't state it enough. It's important. It's crucial. You have to budget or else you're going to get honestly derailed right through the process. Uh, let's moving on. Skipping the pre-approval. You know, buyers tend to think that, hey, I'll just go, uh, I'll submit an offer, I'll find something, I'll submit an offer, make it conditional on financing, only to find out that there are no lending institutions, no banks, no second or third tier lenders, credit unions, or anything that are willing to give them any money. So they go through all of that emotional, you know, the, the anxiety that's associated with buying a house and, and the stress, and they go through all of it only to find out that they can't get any money. So, you know, some buyers start the house hunting without getting pre-approved for a mortgage. You know, it gives you pre-approval, the importance of this. And to really hammer this home, it gives you a clear understanding of how much you can afford and, and helps you stand out in competitive markets. Like if you're competing with people that can only afford 950 and you're approved for 1.5, you have a little bit of wiggle room in, like outside of the competition, right? So by skipping this pre-approval process, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice because you don't know what kind of financial options are at your disposal. So I can't emphasize this enough. Do not skip the pre-approval. Get that picture, make it clear for yourself before you go shopping for a property. So you don't waste time. It's very simple. Don't waste your time. Don't cause yourself any potential heartache. Get the financial picture clear. Get that clarity that you need from the get-go before you make the process, before you make the jump into home ownership. Uh, the next one, a lot of first-time buyers tend to ignore their credit health and the status of their credit. Um, a strong credit score is essential, essential for securing a favorable, a favorable mortgage rate. First time buyers should review their credit reports, address any issues and work on it diligently on improving their credit score before applying for a mortgage. The better your credit score, the better your ability to secure funds for your potential purchase. Pretty state, pretty straightforward there. It doesn't require any additional information. If you have relatively low credit, do some research, contact the credit unions, make sure all of your details are correct. Make because it happens. TransUnion and Equifax here in Canada, there are errors that are caught years down the road, but they're just not updated in, in these credit bureau systems, right? So it's always have a good, make sure you know what's going on with your credit history, with your account, make sure addresses are up to date, make sure they have a good idea of what's going on in your life so they don't make any mistakes and it doesn't essentially harm you and your prospects to buy a home or be lent any money down the road. Make sure you have that under control. Moving on, not shopping for the best mortgage. First time home buyers are famous for this and I don't blame them because they're doing it for the first time. Anytime you do anything for the first time, you're typically going to run into issues. You're typically going to make some mistakes without any proper guidance. Um, 
by not shopping for the best mortgages, first time home buyers, they settle for the mortgage offer they receive. From a personal standpoint, I am my wife and I, we are guilty of this. Before I was in real estate, when we bought our first property, we went with a mortgage broker and, and the, the referral from the agent that we were working with at the time, again, before I was in real estate, um, we took his recommendations because we were brand new to this. We just ate it all up. We sat in his office and we took the mortgage recommendations. And honestly, a few years down the road, we realized that we overpaid significantly. We were for our mortgage, not the actual product of the house, the price of the house, but we were getting just gouged by this particular mortgage situation. Why? Because we didn't do our research. We took the first option that was on the table because we were so excited. Somebody was willing to lend us money and we said, let's go, let's take it. If I could turn the clock back, I would have done a tremendous amount more research. I would have done a lot more research, but you know, in hindsight, it's 2020. You move forward and you try not to make those mistakes again. Shop around, contact a mortgage broker. Uh, me personally, I have some phenomenal industry uh, professionals that I work with that get the job done and provide a variety of solutions because everybody's in a different situation. Some people work uh, on wages. Some people have like hourly wages. Some people have salaries. Some people are self-employed. Some people are owners of companies. So there are situations and solutions and scenarios for everybody. You just have to go and find them or be connected with the right people. Um, mortgage brokers have the ability to put multiple options as opposed to if you go just straight to a bank where there could only be maybe one to three options. You know, you want all of the, as many options as you possibly can on the table before you make a decision because the more options you have, the more knowledge you have about your situation, the better the decision, the more educated the decision you are going to make. Pretty straightforward. Let's move forward. So one thing that first time home buyers typically forget they typically neglect is they, they, they neglect to factor in closing costs. Closing costs can add up to a significant amount, typically anywhere between two to 5% of the home's purchase price. Now failing to account for these costs can strain your finances at the last minute. You don't want to be on the hook for legal fees and closing costs and trans land transfer taxes and in Toronto, double land transfer, all these things. You don't want to be on the hook for this and realize that you have to come up with this because if you don't, you cannot come up with these funds, you do not close on your property. And there are other implications which we'll get into in other episodes of, you know, if you're responsible for the deal falling through. Who's responsible? What happens to deposits and everything like that? We'll dive into it another day. Long story short, make sure you know what your closing costs are. A good mortgage broker will have that outline. They will have an itemized list of what you can expect for your closing costs at all different ranges of prices. You know, so again, that's the benefit of using a mortgage professional, a mortgage broker, because you will, you will be provided with a much clearer picture and far more options about whatever it is that you're looking to purchase versus if you just called a bank. So definitely speaks to how valuable a mortgage broker can be. Um, a lot of first time home buyers get really giddy and say, yeah, we just want to move in. We don't want to do a home inspection and they overlook the home inspection. Skipping a thorough home inspection can be a costly, significantly costly mistake. Inspections reveal potential issues with the property that might not be apparent during, you know, face value, like during the initial viewing. By not getting an inspection, it can lead to unforeseen expenses down the line that as a first time buyer, you just don't want to have to deal with. Honestly, like some good home inspections can range anywhere from 500 to 1500, uh, depending on who you go with. Reputable companies are like Carson Dunlop. Um, me personally, I have a variety of recommendations and referrals that I can provide to any prospective clients. So please never hesitate to reach out. I'd be happy to provide my contacts. Um, but yes, home inspections are great. You want a gen you want a professional to go in and say, Hey, this house is in decent living order. It's in working. It's, it's, it's not falling apart for lack of a better explanation. And just in general, they will provide you with a detailed report as to what may need replacing in five to 10 years. What's in, you know, just an overall condition of the property and the, and the appliances and the infrastructure of the house. You want to make sure the bones of the house are in great condition. Definitely do not overlook a home inspection. Ask for referrals. If you do not have any, do not skip this. Nowadays in the market, 
there's offers that are being submitted, you have the ability to insert conditions. Whereas years ago, if you didn't come in firm, don't come at all. Now, 